How to increase your rental income? It's a great question. And it's something that sometimes you can have a great property manager, okay? And full disclaimer, so I'm not knocking any property manager, so like sometimes you can have a great property manager, but they can be too conservative as well, because at the same time, you they are sometimes looking out for the vendor, but as sorry, the landlord and the tenant as well. That's their job. They're the people, they're the peacemaker, they're the people in the middle. So it's a very tough gig. And sometimes they might advise to put up your rent maybe five to ten dollars. And sometimes it might not be at the current standard or what the market is uh, achieving at this point in time. So it's something where you have to listen to what they're saying and then go back and, and do your own research. Now, what I do is I start looking at you know realestate.com and domain and I start looking at the rental market in my suburb and I start looking at what's on the market. Now, if you've got a very low vacancy rate and that's another thing you should be checking, if you've got a vacancy rate that's below 2%, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tight market. If it's below 1%, it's an extremely tight market and that means there's not many properties on the market at all. Okay, and that means that's in your favor to you know, increase the rent, of course, fairly, but because there's only a limited amount of properties on the market. Now, if you've got a very unique property that is maybe a three bedroom, but it's got a rumpus room, or maybe you've got a four bedroom with a four or five car garage, or maybe you've got a pool, property with a pool in it, maybe you've got a property that's just got some, it's a, a massive living and dining area, okay, and or whatever it may be, maybe it's a five bedroom house, whatever it may be. Even if the property is in a and if the property is in a great location, that makes that 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 adds a lot of value to it. So if you're in a great pocket, close to schools, close to amenities, close to everything that is walking distance, that property there is going to rent out much more easier, and you're going to be able to get great greater quality tenants because they want to be in those those suburbs and those in those those pockets. Okay, there's good pockets and bad pockets in suburbs. So. If you've got one of those properties that I've just listed, okay, this is where you're in favor in an upward market and in a downward market as well, because those sort of properties are a diamond in the rough as well. So that makes sense. So what you do, have a look on realestate.com. You might see properties, let's say your property is renting out for 380 a week, and there's properties in that suburb renting out for 400, 410, and they're, they're, they're nice properties, but they're maybe not at the same standards as your property internally. Maybe they're, they're a little bit older. Maybe they're not close to all the amenities and things like that as well. And so that is something you start to think, okay, well, maybe I can get four, four ten, four twenty, four thirty. So you can bump up that rent an extra thirty, forty, fifty dollars, and you should be fine. If there's not many properties on the market, this is in your favor. And I think that's something you've got to take take in consideration. With a low vacancy rate, I would take advantage of that, especially now with inflation as a landlord, you know, inflation and, and interest rates, you know, it's costing us a lot of money to hold properties as well. But as well, we want to be fair and I don't want to bump up the rent too significantly and say, I'm going to pump it up an extra hundred dollars when it's really, that's not the right thing to do. It's just going off what the market is doing naturally and just being a bit, you know, diligent with your real approach okay if your property is much more outstanding than the other ones of course put an extra 10 or 20 dollars okay because it's going to help with your repayments as well so that's one way you start looking at things another way is let's say you know you've got no one in your property and you want to increase your rent speak to your property manager ask him say listen i want to increase my rent what what can i do uh internally and externally to the property where it's going to get an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars or whatever it may be. And then I'd say, listen, you put an air conditioner into that property, you're going to get an extra 30 dollars a week. So you start losing the numbers and you say, okay, an extra 30 dollars a week is over 1500 dollars a year in extra rent. Okay, if the aircon's going to cost me an extra 3000 dollars to put in, you look at it in one year, you're going to be making that money back. Okay, so it makes sense to do something like that. You maybe want to install a dishwasher, okay? A dishwasher is very, very valuable to a property, especially for a tenant not having to do the dishes. So that is something to install as well. But speak to your your, your uh, property manager and ask him, what can I do to install certain things and increase the rent? Another thing is, we have purchased, purchased a couple of properties for our clients and uplifted them by doing a paint, a full paint internally, okay? One client, it cost them uh, $5,000, $5,000 to do an internal paint on their property and gave them an extra $50 a week. So you look at the return on investment, it's quite high, okay? So that that is something that you can use to your advantage, and that's an extra two and a half grand a year now in your rental income. So things like this is speaking to your property manager. Another thing would be as well, speak to, if, you, if they've given you a list of things of what you can do and to increase it significantly, um, those things there, those items that you're doing, you like the 
the air conditioners, the dishwashers and things like that, you can actually claim through depreciation as well. So keep that in mind. And that's going to increase your, 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 your deductions uh, at tax time too. So look, these are kind of things that you can do to increase your rent. Another thing could be using a tactic if you're in a good rental market and it's uh, low vacancy rates, once again, not many properties on the market. Instead of putting your lease agreement at 12 months, maybe you can do it at six months, okay? And then what that can, what you can do there is every six months, you know, you have a look at the market and if the rents are still increasing, it allows you to keep up with inflation where sometimes a year, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen in a year where if you bring it to six months, then you can say at six months, I'm gonna increase the rent a little bit more, 10, $20 and, and, and stagger it as we go along. So there are things you can do. Um, another thing you can do is purchase a property and you can turn it into a rooming house, okay? Now, this can require some 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 uh some some a lot of work involved okay and you start renting out individual rooms so there's how there's locations that need a rooming house places that are close to you know to universities and cbds and, and even in re low regional towns are requiring some rooming house so this is actually a benefit for these regional towns and and they maybe maybe need a, a rooming house for defense force or for nurses and doctors and things like this as well so you convert a house into a rooming house and you start renting out each individual bedroom, okay? Now there is rules and regulations where you have to abide to. Every state and territory has uh, got their own rules and, reg and, and legislation laws, so you have to abide by that. By doing that, by converting your house into that, that can increase your rent significantly. And so that is something to keep in mind. Now, this is quite costly, but the return on investment is quite high. So. The more return, the higher the return on investment with properties, the more risk involved. Okay, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Now, sometimes you can actually knock down a house and actually build a house specified for rooming house. Okay, but once again, that is a much more uh, ex expensive um, project to do. Now, another thing is what you can do. Let's say you've purchased a property. And it's got a very big block at the back. Okay, and you've got a vacant land. You can actually put a, a granny flat on there. This is a great way to build, do a granny flat. Now. Pre-COVID, you could get these granny flats, you know, built for about 150k. I think now with inflation, probably looking maybe 250k to build a granny flat. And you build a granny flat in the back pocket of, of the house. And what you can do, there's there's rules and regulations. I know in Queensland, there's some, there's rules you have to um, abide by. But you can rent that out individually as a as a separate dwelling. Now you got to make sure that it's not going to interfere with the house at the front, and you got to make sure there's a driveway, a path, making sure the door may have to face the street as well. There's some rules, like I said, and regulations, but that will increase your rent. So you look at it as if you can get a, a construction loan and you build a granny flat, cost you 250k, but you can rent it out for 300 bucks a week or more. Your cash flow is going to jump up significantly as well, okay. And that's another way you can you can do that. And that can happen. For, that that can be a great strategy for people that have a lot of cash, but unfortunately they can't get any more. Um, they can't get any more access to credit from their bank or their broker. And they say, you know what? Let's actually do this ourselves and actually build something. And we may be able, we might be able to get a small little loan to help us with the construction loan, and we're going to rent this out individually, and we might have to go through the whole process. So that's that's another strategy in itself. So hopefully that helps you, gives you a few ideas. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things what you can can do, um, and it's a great way to I guess manufacture your your rental income, which I like to use a for, like a word of forced appreciation. So. Hope that hopefully that uh, has helped you. Hopefully you got a lot of insights. Okay, any questions? Please reach out to any of us, any of us at the team here. We're more than happy to guide you or give you some advice on on other on other personal issues. Okay, that are tailored to you. But this today is just general advice and just giving you, I guess, a bit of value of what you can possibly do to increase your rents. All right, guys. If this served you, if you lot, if you got a lot of value, please just like, click the like button, share this video. It means the world to us because we are just trying to empower more Australian investors. All right, guys. We'll see you next week for next week's poll.